Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me. It is the original gamer, Stevie Stroh, and I have got a ton of things I am going to show you guys from my latest pickup, my latest haul. So what's today? Today's Thursday, May 25th, the day after my birthday, which was yesterday. And um, this weekend that just passed, Sunday, I drove up to the Orlando area to meet a member of our color computer community. I met uh, Michael Brandt to pick up a bunch of Coco stuff. Uh, well, not just Coco stuff, but a bunch of retro stuff. What was the story behind that? Well, um, if you're a member of the Color Computer Facebook group, you um, probably know uh, Brian Blake as one of the members, and Brian um, is a member of the Color Computer group and has a huge extensive collection of, of just all kinds of cool retro stuff. And I don't know, a couple months ago, Brian posted on the Facebook group I want to sell my entire collection and he's like I want to sell the whole thing I don't want to send it I don't want to do it piecemeal and I don't want to deal with shipping I don't do any of that crap so he's like here's all these pictures I've got basically you know like the Ark of the Covenant and every rare relic ever known and I want to sell it all one shot and so what happened was um, myself and Michael Brandt we kind of conspired together saying hey why don't we go in halvesies on this and let's see what he wants for it he, he wanted a very reasonable price and so um, Michael and I basically split it and um, Brian lives in North Florida and um, Michael lives in Central Florida so Michael Brandt actually drove up met Brian got everything and had it all and then we just planned a time where I could drive up to like Orlando to meet uh, Michael and kind of split the stuff. The things I was only interested in were hardware and systems where Michael got a bunch of old rainbow magazines and books and, and floppy disks and all kinds of other cool things. And there are things I just don't have room for. As you can see behind me, I just got so much crap. I just don't have room for magazines and whatnot and what have you. So I was just interested in a handful of systems. So let me go ahead and show you what we got. So, and I don't remember which one is which, but I, yeah, so this, so this is one of them. Okay, so I got I actually got two Color Computer 3. So you can see that this is a Tandy Color Computer 3, right? Which are fairly rare to find. What's the serial number on this one here? What's the serial number, right? So here's your model number, there's your serial number. I'm not sure what, what you can tell by that. But what is cool about this, the cool thing about this Color Computer 3 was, number one, there was no screws in it. So it was very easy just to take the cover off. And as soon as I took the cover off, I noticed some really cool things here. Number one, what we'll notice is that what you're going to see here is this is a Cloud 9 512K RAM board. And this is an older version of that board because now they have the Triad, which is a smaller, leaner, meaner board. But that's the Cloud 9 board. So this has got 512K RAM upgrade. It also has the Hitachi 6309 CPU. And I could tell that right away because... It was in a socket, right? So the Motorola 60, 6809 CPU was soldered, but a lot of people have taken the time to replace that processor with the Hitachi 6309, which is completely compatible with the Motorola, but offers a lot more advanced features. And then last but not least, another thing that's probably very hard to see in this web camera, but this chip here in the middle is known as the Gimme chip, and the Gimme chip is what makes the Coco 3 what it is. And this one happens to be the 1987 version of the Gimme. So I've got an 87 Gimme, which is the newer, better Gimme chip. So this is a fully loaded Coco 3. This has got everything you would want in a Coco 3. You know, having a 512K RAM is pretty awesome. Having um, a 6309 is great because that's... The 6309 was the processor that started uh, the project Nitrous 9, which is the updated version of the OS 9 operating system. So this is going to be my spare to my Coco 3. I've got one other Coco 3 that's just like this, 512K, uh, 6309, 87 Gimme. This is going to be my backup Coco 3. I've got one more Coco 3, and I haven't powered this one up to test it yet. Uh, serial number 1066659. So this is another Coco 3. I don't know if it's been upgraded, but because the warranty sticker has been pierced, this system has been opened, and I just haven't had time to fire it up. Man, I just got a pile. Like, like I said, today is Thursday. I got this stuff. Sunday night. I it was late Sunday night when I got home. By the way, if you got 
two and a half hours to kill, you can watch the replay of my live stream where I was driving home in the car. So here's a second Coco 3. And once I figure out what the specs of this one are, because I have technically more Coco 3s than I really need, I'm going to be making these available um, to people who need a good home. Now, I also got two multi-pack interfaces. Now, this is the model 26-3024. And the 26-3024 model, this one does not necessarily upgraded to run on the Coco 3. And this one does not have its um, warranty sticker, uh, has not been violated yet. So this one needs an upgrade and it needs to have its PAL chip upgraded. And that's a pretty inexpensive thing. It's like a $6 chip you can swap out on here. And so I am going to just test this and, and see if it has the PAL chip or get it upgraded. And so this will be available to somebody who needs a multi-pack. Um, I got one of those. I got one more multi-pack interface. This one is also the uh, 26-3024. But because this one has a hole in the warranty sticker, this one might have already been upgraded with the PAL chip. And I've already I put a message out in the Facebook group. How do you tell? What's the peak? So I already know what I got a peak to... Um, to test those, and I'm going to try to test those later today. Now, also in the world of Coco, I got not one, but two silver Coco ones. This one's got a Coco 2 keyboard that's exceptionally clean. What is the, this one also, it's, um, it's warranty sticker. This looks like this was um, re-stickered a few different times, so it might have had some factory upgrades or some Radio Shack official upgrades, but this is a model number 26-3004, serial number 031437. Um, silver Coco 1 in really good shape, very clean. Um, not a lot of staining or yellowing on the, on the silver parts. The silver parts are still silver. There's not a lot of wearing out where the palms go. A lot of times you find an old Coco and the palm rest hair is worn black where all the paint has worn off. So. It's a really clean and pretty Coco 1. I don't know the specs on it. I don't know how much RAM it has until I can test it out. It might be upgraded to 64K. Who knows? Maybe even a 6309 processor in here because you can actually put those processors in just about anything. So that's one of my Coco 1s. I don't know what the specs are. I will to be determined. Another silver Coco 1. This one's showing its age a little bit. It's got the original Chiclity keyboard. And those keys are a little bit yellowed. Now this one's got the kind of TRS-80 badge off to the side. And I don't know why, but I thought these things were centered. And I don't see any indication here that there was any glue removed. So I don't know if this is just an oddball one that was off to the side and not centered. This one is an older Model 2 that has the original RAM badge on it. So this was an original 16K unit. Its warranty sticker is also pierced, so this one could be possibly upgraded. This is a model 26-3002, serial number 139. Wow, look at that serial number, quadruple zero 139. This is actually probably a pretty old and rare cocoa. So I'm probably not gonna wanna sell that one. Serial number 139, that's actually kind of cool. So. I will check out its specs and see what, um, how much RAM it has. Uh, but other than that, I'm not gonna mess with it. And being as that it's a serial number 139, probably not gonna wanna sell it. This will end up going on a shelf or something, but yay, Coco, right? So I think that's the end of the Coco stuff. Hold on, there's, oh, what else did I get? So I got one more. Um, one more Coco SDC, and this one's in the red 3D printed case. So this is an extra Coco SDC that I'm going to actually um, change over to work on a Dragon, and I'll explain why in a minute. But this is going to become a, a, a Dragon-based uh, SDC. And while I'm not interested in a lot of books, there was one in particular that I was interested in. This is the Basic 09 Tour Guide by Dale Puckett. And since I am in the process of relearning BASIC and doing a series on how to program in BASIC, this is kind of cool. Um, and I do plan on messing with the OS 9 version of BASIC 09 in the future. So this is kind of a cool thing to have. This will definitely go up on my shelf like 
all the crap you see there behind me. So, is that the end of my Coco haul? No, wait, there's one more. And I gotta move a few things. So, oh, it's like freaking Christmas. What is the piece de, resi piece de resistance here? Well, I've got the Tano Dragon in the box. And the Tano Dragon is the US version of the UK Dragon that was sold for a brief period of time in the United States, but this is basically a dragon. And the Dragon is the UK version of the Coco. And um, it is not, the Dragon is not technically a clone of the color computer because it, they weren't trying to say, let's rip off Tandy and make one just like them, unlike Brazil, which actually did that. Brazil actually made an actual Coco clone. This was just a legitimate machine that was made based on the same Motorola chips and reference design because basically the color computer was based on a Motorola reference design. It says, okay, here's the processor, here's the graphics chip, here's this. Go ahead and make a machine. And they basically took that design and made the Coco. So these guys did the same thing. They took the same reference design and they made a machine that is basically a Coco with a much better keyboard. But the only difference is, is that the actual ROM chips are different because it's made by different companies. So there are some slight differences in how the keyboard is translated where the software will run. You can run Coco software in a Dragon. You can run Dragon software in a Coco. But the keyboard mapping is different. That's the main difference between a Coco and a Dragon. And um, there's been a lot of games that have been patched and ported between the two. Um, and so, for example, this says this has an ex this. When you read the specs here, it says it has an advanced 16809 microprocessor, powerful 64K of RAM, extended Microsoft Basic, professional quality keyboard, free basic training manual, nine color display, five different resolutions, up to 256 by 192, sound and music capability, uses home VHF TV set, and uses standard cassette recorder. So this is a Dragon in the box that's pretty cool i will take it out of the box and i will um set it up at least once because i've always wanted to see a dragon i've actually got some you can almost see behind me over here um right here these are actual tano dragon joysticks that are new in box as well so i want to set up this coco sdc put it in dragon mode. I've got some dragon software. I don't know how much dragon software I have, but I'd love to set up a dragon with some dragon joysticks and try some dragon games. And I'll probably do a couple of videos on dragon games. And once I get hooked on that, I'll probably be hitting people up on where I can find more dragon games. So this Coco SDC is going to go in that dragon. So that's a pretty good Coco haul, right? Two Coco 3s, two Coco 1s, one of them being a, a very early serial number that I just found out, two multi-pack interfaces, and a Tano Dragon new in box. That is a pretty cool haul, but wait, there's more. And so Michael Brandt is also offloading to me some of his excess retro systems that are not Tandy Radio Shack color computer related, but are still cool retro systems. So what is one of those? Well, how about this baby right here? How about this Atari 800XL computer? I have always wanted an Atari 8-bit system. Um, I don't have the power cord for it. It looks like it uses a normal RF out. Um, so I'm going to have to order a couple of doodaddies for this. But I cannot wait to get this Atari 800 um, fired up. And I think there is. I'm going to have to ask a few people now that I have one. I think there's a way you can get a cartridge and run an SD card on this thing too. And so I want to start downloading some of the games and I want to start playing a bunch of Atari games. So the Atari 800 uh, XL, nice little system. What's the serial number on this thing? All right, so the serial number is 107454, right? Atari 800 XL made in Hong Kong. All right. Uh, I, I don't know if it's been opened or not. I don't know what type of internal upgrades are available for those. Are we done yet? No, we're not. There's more. This is an Atari 520 ST. And this is serial number 1004703 it was made in june of 1985 
is the inception date of this replicant right here. So serial number A110047003, Atari 520ST. There is what looks to be a some type of cartridge or expansion module doohickey on that side. There are what I'm assuming are two joystick ports on this side here. And then on the back side of this guy here, we have got what? We've got power, which I don't have the power adapter for. I'm gonna to need to find one of those. I've got MIDI in and MIDI out. I've got a monitor connection, so I'm gonna to need to figure out how to adapt that to either composite or RGB or S video or something else like that. I've got a parallel printer port, a serial port, there's a floppy disk connection, and then there's a hard disk connection. So there's a bunch of different ports in the back of these things. And you know, the Atari ST, these things all lived at the same time. So the original Macintosh, the Amiga, and the Atari all lived around the same time. And they were all based on the same Motorola 68000 series CPU, which was the next generation of the color computer, which had a 6800 series. So this was 16 bits. This was next generation Motorola CPU technology. And this core technology was similar for Macs, Atari STs, and the Amiga system. So I've always wanted to have something like this. I also have Commodore stuff on my wish list. So one of these days, maybe I'll get a C64 or an Amiga. You never know. Fingers crossed. Need to find room for it back there somewhere. And one more doohickey. Something that I don't know a lot about, but I need to learn more of, but it just really looks cool too. But this is an MSX system. And this particular model here is the CXSM Music Computer by Yamaha. So it is an MSX based system. It's got a nice full stroke keyboard. Uh, uh, on the side here, two joystick ports, very similar to the Atari joystick ports connections. On the back here, we have this port here, which looks like that's a printer port, a cassette port, and a monitor port. So again, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get some type of DIN connection to um, take this monitor port and output it to something that I can view or capture, which would have to be co hopefully composite or S video, because that's what I have. Oh, there's more crap on the side here too. So on this side here, we have the on off switch. We have what looks like, I, I can't see in the dark here. Uh, music keyboard, MIDI in and MIDI out. And then uh, stereo out to analog stereo out your RCA output. So this is um, audio. Now actually, I don't know if that's in or out, but yeah, so there's, there's audio ports on here. There's MIDI ports on here. So I, I know enough about the MSX to be dangerous, but I'm pretty sure that the MSX was a system that was in Japan and the MS part actually comes from Microsoft. Microsoft was involved with MSX. And I think the MSX system is the one that the game Thexter was originally developed for. And I believe it's based on a Z80 CPU um, and or Z80 if you're in Europe. And I believe it is also um, very similar in hardware specs to either the um, TI 994A and or the ColecoVision because I seem to recall reading that if you buy the super game module for the ColecoVision, it adds the extra sound chip that makes your ColecoVision hardware compatible with the MSX. And I think people are actually porting MSX games to work on the ColecoVision with the super game module. So um, this, from what I've seen on my postings on Facebook, the people who have seen this picture say that this, that this is a good find. I believe them. I, I've always wanted an MSX because I know it by name, but I don't know all of the history and um, and specifications and stuff like that. But I'm looking, I'm looking into uh, learning more about this system and getting all the right power cords and display cords I need so I can look at it and also be able to record it with my recording software that I record all my retro stuff and I record all of my retro gameplay videos on real hardware and I capture them using analog capture because I like to see all the imperfections of what an analog stuff look like so if it output composite or RF I like to captured that way so you see those old imperfections. I like to try to keep things looking as um, original as they looked as opposed to adapting things to 
uh, you know, HDMI and all that kind of stuff and seeing things clean and pristine that never really looked that way when they were, uh, you know, back in their analog 80s. So as you can see here, I got a ton of crap and it's just right now all over the floor of my little room here. So I've got to try to organize this stuff. Some of this Coco stuff I've got to fire up and test and um, figure out what the specs are. I am going to try to make um, at least one or two color computer threes available to people in the community who need one. I'm going to try to make a couple of these multi-packs available to pe people in the community who need one. I've got a multi-pack behind me right here that has already been modded with the PAL chip to work on the Coco 3. And I don't use it enough to need a spare, so I'm not going to hold on to these multi-packs. I know they're hard to find, so I'm going to make them available. Um, and that's my haul. So that was my weekend. Was That was my Sunday evening was the... Uh, you know, five hour driving to Orlando and back and picking this stuff up. And I did a live stream <laughs> just because, right? So I did a live stream the uh, the ride back. If you got two and a half hours to kill, uh, you might want to watch that video too. So if you like the color computer, check out my YouTube channel. I have so many videos on the games of the color computer. I have tutorials on how to set up certain things like the Coco SDC on there. I've got a series on programming in basic where I'm going through every single chapter and going over programming things. I've got interviews with people who have developed software for the color computer from the past to the present to the future. I've got a lot of retro stuff, not just color computer stuff, but I got a ton of Coco stuff on my channel. But I also have me playing arcade games and old console games like NES and Genesis and things like that. So if you're, if you're nostalgic for old computers, old video games and old technologies, you might want to check out my YouTube channel. Um, and I also have some pretty cool retro merchandise right over here. So if you want to get a t-shirt that... Um, says, uh, you know, insert coin, or there's a t-shirt that's got a picture of a Genesis or an Atari or the asteroids or things like that. We've got a lot of cool custom retro merchandise that was drawn by a very cool retro artist, Joel M. Adams. And so this one here that says like insert coin, that's my logo. That's just a really cool shirt here. This is the dragon from adventure. So we have really cool retro swag too on my website, which is uh, ogstevestro.com. So check that stuff out too. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do me a favor, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about these systems and if you know where I can get cables and adapters for them and um, SD cartridges and all the stuff I need now to make my new systems playable in the modern era. I need to know these things. As I got new things to learn and new toys to play with. And I really love hearing from you. If you like this stuff, I'm the original gamer Stevie Stroh. I got some stuff to clean. I got some systems to figure out. And then I got to make, make some game videos, man. So I'll see you all later. Peace out and bye-bye, everybody. You may only be young once, but you can be retro forever. OG, out.